fans out there in the Deer District. Welcome back, Maria Taylor, alongside Adrian Wardenowski. We've got Jalen Rose and we've got Jay Williams here, but we also have Drew Holiday standing inside a little bit quieter by Sir Marina. Drew Holiday, I don't know if you can hear us right now, but the fireworks yeah, yeah. are definitely going off outside celebrating a win in game three. But you have to walk me through the mindset because your team was down 0-2, returning back home with an opportunity to take one off the Suns. What did you guys talk about leading into this game? Uh, first off, y'all good out there? I mean, I don't know, honestly. <laughs> Man, I we heard know. in the locker room like crazy going through, but y'all outside? No, yes, tripping. we're outside on the uh, roof. Okay. Outside the uh, arena, Drew. <laughs> okay. Um, nah, it was... We knew what we had to do. Um, we've been in this position before, and, and we knew what this game meant to us. We knew what it meant to the city, but most of all, it was about us coming out, playing hard, having fun, and, and being able to execute the game plan. Hey, Drew, those three three-pointers you hit in the uh, third quarter when Phoenix was making a run, uh, do you think that might be a turning point, or did it feel like a turning point for you offensively in this series? Um, it definitely was a turning point for me. Um, those shots felt great, and they went in. I mean, all my shots, all my threes today felt great, but those going in, um, I, I kind of felt like the momentum was going their way before that. Uh, I kind of got the momentum back on our side. So uh, really just about making shots, uh, going out there and being able to, to, to complete that. Hey, Drew, congratulations on the win. What about the defensive effort in slowing down Devin Booker and also the thought process of picking up CP3 full court and making him work yeah, at this man, point uh, of his career? Yeah, I mean, with CP, man, one of us is going to have to be tired. <laughs> we can't be just going out there and, and, and nah, it's, it's going to have to be one of us. But uh, um, don't know why Book didn't come back, out, uh, come, come back in, but, um, man, it's a task, and, and it's hard, but... These are the finals. These are the reasons why we play. Um, we come out here and try to fight every night. So uh, we did a good job of trying to slow them down, and hopefully we can do it again ne uh, next game. Drew, how incredible is it to see your teammate in Giannis, just the way he's been playing downhill? I mean, back-to-back 40-point -back games. How is it like playing with a player like that? Um, it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, I think that today he did a, he did a better job of um, when he's getting downhill and he knows he's attracting guys, he's making plays out. And uh, for us, um, getting wide open shots, great passes, knocking those in, I feel like it just fuels energy and it opens it up for him. So uh, that's one thing that he's consistently going to do is get downhill. Um, he's going to duck in, get to the free throw line, and he's been knocking them in. So uh, we're going to continue to go to big for him. Well, you were knocking them in too, Drew, because you were 5 of 10 from 3. You had only made one 3 in the first two games. I hate to bring up old stuff, but you have to walk I'm me through. Always, always bringing up old stuff. Well, I'm always bringing up old stuff. Well, I had to do it. I'm sorry. But what was working for you offensively tonight? Um, really just sticking with it. Uh, I know there's two shooters right there with you. Uh, just knowing if you go through a slump, man, you just got to stay confident. Uh, stay confident. And, and knock down your shot. And, you know, being home, the crowd behind you, uh, my family here in the building, you know, you just got to, really just got to be able to uh, concentrate and have fun up there. Well, Drew, we appreciate you stopping by and chatting with us. We made it through the fireworks outside. Y'all put up some fireworks Holla inside, okay? Day. Let them know. No. Let's go, Drew. Let's do it at six. All yes, right, sir. we'll see you on Wednesday. Drew yep. Holiday with 21 yes, points safe, in the game. Three win for the Bucks. And let's start right there with what Drew was able to do because, really, we were able to see Drew Holiday come in and start the run in the third quarter. I love that the crowd is screaming for Jalen Rose. <laughs> Midwest. It, no, it doesn't even matter where we are, Jalen. Don't do that. They do the same thing in Phoenix. Uh, but your takeaway from what we saw from the backcourt, because you said we needed to see a better backcourt supporting Giannis in this game. My actual takeaway is the question. I asked him. Uh -huh. It was defensively. And think about it. Devin Booker didn't finish the game because he wasn't playing well and they wanted to give him some rest. So he'd be fired up going into the next game. That's a huge key. And then Drew deciding that he was going to pick up CP3 full court. They did a better job of defending his pick and rolls. A lot less switches. And on the other end, Drew Holiday was really aggressive offensively. I give Coach Bud a lot of credit. They, they won the rebounding differential. Right? Plus nine on the boards. They limited this team to only making nine threes as opposed to game two. They made 20 threes and they had a plus 10 re, uh, free throw percentage as well so I, I feel like they came in defensively they did everything they need to do and Giannis played out of his mind I do people don't focus on all the great things that Giannis does do each and every night Giannis played with such force tonight just like he did in game two in Phoenix certainly had a lot more help but listen I, I hope we don't ever hear again the idea that Giannis Antetokounmpo is a player that in the postseason you can't play through, that you can take it all away from him in the postseason. He has put together two back-to-back -back historic performances. He's doing it on both ends of the floor, and Milwaukee is back in these finals.
because Giannis Antetokounmpo has been the best player in games two and three. Well, you saw that graphic right there. Giannis Antetokounmpo, he's able to score the fourth most points through his first three career finals game, back-to-back 40-point -back double-doubles. It was impressive the way he was able to dominate in the paint, but like Woj said, that they were able to play through him and still find open shots on the perimeter. And playing through him, a lot of that meant getting DeAndre Ayton in foul trouble. The 18 points that he had, he really had like the 15, first 15 minutes of the game. They got him in foul trouble, and then Frank Kaminsky, Look like a deer in headlights once he got into the game. And Bobby Portis came in, gave him some energy, gave him some toughness. But again, there's a significant fallout up front, in particular with the injury to Sarge, if Aiden's going to get in foul trouble. And pace. Look, Giannis talked a lot about, and you heard Drew talk about, playing downhill. When Giannis catches the ball in transition, he is a freight train. Six assists, got people involved. You also saw a, side, a ton of side pick and rolls. Because as him as a roller, it forces the defense to contract. Uh, it, once again, you have to give them all the credit in the world because they've executed their game plan perfectly. Yeah, the, the ball movement for Milwaukee. Phoenix had almost 80 more passes in games one and two. And uh, the Bucks knew they had to get that ball moving. And Chris Middleton, who they needed a lot from tonight, he did it in lots of ways. You, you talk about the foul trouble with Aiton. That third foul he got on Aiton late in the second quarter. That changed the second half of this game. But you saw Middleton in much more of a playmaker role. But he was hitting shots. He was setting up his teammates. And all of a sudden, this Milwaukee team, you saw the ball zipping around. And the result was a blowout win. And also, here's the thing why people don't truly give Giannis his love because he's Goliath. Mm -hmm. like he's a seven-footer, right? He's improved his offensive game. I see him shooting one-leg shots. I see him dribble driving, creating offense. He did some terrific passes to teammates that cut. They learned to move without the ball. There's something to be said for learning how to play with a great player and not standing around staring at him the entire game. Well, it's become a very guard-oriented league, too. We all have become mesmerized by the three. And so when we see Giannis and a guy who's going to dominate the paint, it looks a little different, but it's still very effective, as we saw in game three. And we saw the Bucks. They were able to have 28 assists on 43 made mm -hmm. field goals. That's because they're playing through honest I do want to say this though if I'm Devin Booker and I know he sat the fourth quarter if you go back and you watch the tape some of his shots were contested but those are typically shots that he makes mm -hmm. right so I, I think Monty Williams did the right thing by sitting him in the fourth obviously had heavy legs that he had in carrying their last series and this series as well in the first two games I think they're going to be okay it's going to be a matter of them knocking down shots from the outside but I'm not as worried these are shots that Devin Booker typically hits well CP3 had plus 30 um, in game one and then D book had it in game two neither one of them scratched 20 this game and, and Malika asked Giannis about it but his dominance when he's making free throws 13 out of 17 from the line he's going to get to the line with the way he plays and shooting the ball that way at the free throw line you know, that certainly changes uh, uh, the complexion of the game for Milwaukee. Yeah, for sure. But it also changes the complexion when you've got Devin Booker only able to score 10 points in a game. That's the second fewest scoring he's had so far this entire season. And for it to come right now in the finals, you really got to recalibrate and be able to, to make something happen in game four on the road. Role players respond playing in front of their home fans. Mm -hmm. There's a difference when you show up to work and you get out of the car, people patting you on the back, hey, your suit is great, your uh, your haircut looks great. Everybody tell me. You... look at you and say your haircut looks great? Because <laughs> oh, oh, my haircut does look <laughs> great. Yeah, it does look <laughs> awesome. That's but, why, the, but, but the point is, all of a sudden, Bobby Portis is getting those chances on his front of his home fans. Like, that makes a difference. And he gave great energy. And again, it was a total team effort. But Giannis led the way. He was so very dominant. Not many human beings can score 40 points in an NBA playoff finals game. He's done it in back-to-back. -back. And I'm doing this every game. So every game from now on out, DeAndre, and if you're on the floor, I'm allowing, the, I'm allowing Giannis to attack you constantly. Because if you get him in foul trouble, it then makes Young him a, perimi a perimeter-oriented team. Yeah, that was one point that you pointed to Woj was like okay DeAndre Aiden getting that third foul that was critical that was one of those moments but we all have to remember here that Giannis hyper extended his knee he had to set out Crazy. two games against Atlanta <laughs> wow. and now we're seeing him with back-to-back -back 40 point games I don't think we can stress enough what he's been able to do even though he's had sustained an injury this postseason yeah th these are the first 40 point back-to-back -back games in his career and you know when I see Giannis on the court here in the finals I think Incredible. of coming to Milwaukee seven years ago he's a teenager skinny kid hadn't even started started games for the Bucks yet 
and he's here from Greece. He's lonely. His family's not here yet. Remember him giving me a tour of his apartment out by the road practice facility. And to see the transformation of Giannis Antetokounmpo to a two-time MVP to now a player that has the Bucks back in these NBA Finals. We talk about it a lot. He is one of the most remarkable stories mm -hmm. and individuals in NBA history. And I'll say, say this too, Woj. This is a lesson out there for any guy out there, any woman out there who wants to play the sport of basketball or does any sport. Perseverance always wins. So tonight, 13 of 17 from the free throw line. 13 of 17 from the free throw line. And he had that one clip with P.J. Tucker where they're laughing. He's like, hey, the only way is up for me. He keeps coming. There is a relentless energy about him. It is perpetual. He does not stop. And that's what you love about his flow. But it's great for this NBA final number one to see new teams. You're seeing fireworks. You're seeing new fan bases. You're seeing the Deer District. There's more people outside than inside. Then also to see players like Devin Booker and Giannis get rewarded for staying. So many times, in particular, in both of their careers early, people suggested that they should leave that the franchise wasn't going to do right by them that the franchise wasn't going to build a quality uh, supporting cast around them now both of those guys are in the finals and Giannis was dominant tonight I think both Devin Booker and Giannis understand you are a franchise player in good times and bad it's easy to be a franchise guy when everything's going great these are guys who led teams through very difficult periods and Giannis what he's done to lead this team now into the finals you know back with a win here in game three and a chance to tie this on Wednesday night but, in game four. But also, we talked about the free throws, right? He shortened it up, Jay. Yeah, he we did. We sit there watching the game, and, it. like, if you're going to take 15 seconds, you're thinking about it. That's off. <laughs> like, we watched, like, that's off. Today, didn't he speed it up? Yeah. Was that a home thing? That was a confidence thing. Hey, maybe because they no weren't one's counting. counting. No one's counting. Exactly. You don't have 20,000 fans exactly. counting, exactly. telling you how long you're taking. <laughs> so that means you can go 13 for 17 uh, and put up a 40-point game also. But let's talk about the Suns a little bit more. And, okay, so what has to change then? Because we've seen them win a lot of different ways. We've seen them get out in transition and score a lot. We've seen him have to do it when, you know, a Cam Johnson has to step up and maybe CP3 isn't scoring the same way. But this was a total domination by the Bucs. This game looked completely different from what we've seen through the first two. If you Phoenix, all you got to do is win one game on the road. Mm -hmm. Take one. That's it. Still one. Mm -hmm. all, all, that, that's it. And you go back and say, Book is not going to play that poorly. Aiden is not going to get in foul trouble. Their role players were terrific. You see Cam, Cam Johnson out there getting great dunks, making layups, making threes. Like Their, their young supporting cast continues to mature. If you're Phoenix, you just got to get one game. I think if you're Phoenix, you have to find some way to mitigate the risk for DeAndre Aiden. And I think that comes with continuing. Like, he's a young player. So, hey, this is what Giannis is going to do to try to attack you. You have to stay disciplined defensively. We can't afford you to get in foul trouble.